Church leaders write to Keir Starmer, fears of conversion therapy ban. Church leaders in the UK are worried. They have written a letter to Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Their concern is about a new law that may ban something called conversion therapy. They fear this ban will affect traditional churches and ordinary Christian practices. In their appeal, they refer to various biblical scriptures to underscore their beliefs and the potential implications of the legislation. The church leaders believe that this ban could criminalize their regular activities. These activities include pastoral conversations and prayers with people who struggle with unwanted same-sex attraction or gender issues. They are asking to meet with the Prime Minister to talk about their concerns. They believe there is a lack of understanding about religion in public life. This lack of understanding, they say, is causing unfair hostility towards Bible-believing churches. In 1 Timothy 4.12, the Apostle Paul advises, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. This scripture reflects the church leader's belief that their faith and practice should be respected and understood, not despised or misunderstood. Conversion therapy is a practice that aims to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Many people and organizations, like Stonewall and Humanists UK, say it is harmful. They want a complete ban on it. Labour, the political party led by Keir Starmer, promised to bring a law to ban conversion therapy. They said this in their party manifesto. Some sources say this law could be introduced within the first 100 days of their administration. Romans 12-2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This scripture emphasizes the Christian belief in transformation and renewal through faith, which the church leaders fear may be misinterpreted as conversion therapy under the new law. The church leaders' main fear is that the ban will be too broad. They worry it will include normal Christian practices. For example, Stonewall wants the ban to include private prayer. Jane Ozan, who is part of the banned conversion therapy campaign, says that even gentle, non-coercive prayer should be banned. The church leaders find this alarming. They ask, will police and prosecutors decide if someone has prayed the wrong kind of prayer? James 5.16 states, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. This highlights the significance of prayer in the Christian faith not just as a ritual, but as a powerful and essential practice for healing and support. The leaders worry that the law may criminalize such deeply rooted practices. The church leaders also worry about families. They think the ban could affect conversations between parents and their children. If the definition of conversion therapy is broad, parents might get into trouble for talking to their kids about gender issues. This concern is not just for Christian parents, but also for those who are critical of gender identity changes. Deuteronomy 6-6-7 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. This scripture underscores the importance of parental guidance and instruction in faith a practice that the church leaders fear may be hindered by the new law. The letter ends with a request to meet the Prime Minister. The church leaders want to explain their concerns in person. They also want to help the government understand Christianity better. They hope this will lead to better laws that do not harm religious practices. Proverbs 11.14 states, Where there is no guidance, people falls but in an abundance of counselors there is safety. This reflects the church leader's desire for dialogue and counsel with the government to ensure that the new legislation is balanced and fair. Many respected church leaders have signed this letter. They include Rev. Dr. Thomas Brand from the Evangelical Fellowship of Congregational Churches and Greater Love Declaration. 
Rev. Graham Nichols, Director of Affinity Church Network, Dr. Ian Paul, Member of the Church of England's Archbishop's Council, Rev. Dr. Matthew Roberts, Vicar of Trinity Church York, Bishop Andy Lines from the Anglican Network in Europe. Hebrews 13.17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This scripture reinforces the role of church leaders as guardians of faith, emphasizing the importance of their voice in discussions about religious practices and laws. These leaders have made strong statements about their concerns. Dr. Roberts said that Christianity is very important to the history and culture of Britain. He thinks it remains a vital voice for the well-being of society. But he feels that some people in the government are not aware of the church's existence. He also thinks they do not understand what Christians believe and why. He hopes the new government will recognize the important role of Christians in Britain and avoid making laws that might harm them. Matthew 5, 14, 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father, who is in heaven. This passage speaks to the church's role in society as a source of guidance and moral light, a role that church leaders believe is under threat from misunderstanding and legislation. Rev. Nichols also commented, he said that they want to support the new Labour government and be prayerful, but he has serious concerns about the proposed conversion therapy ban. He believes new legislation will not stop genuine abuse because it is already illegal. Instead, he thinks it will lead to false accusations against people who want to live according to their Christian faith. This includes parents and pastors who follow the Bible's teachings on sexuality and gender. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. This scripture highlights the belief that biblical teachings are central to Christian life and practice. Church leaders fear that the new law might prevent them from teaching and living out these scriptural truths. The church leaders are trying to balance their support for the new government with their concerns about the proposed ban. They understand the need to protect people from harm. However, they also want to protect their religious freedoms. They are worried that the new law might go too far and harm ordinary Christians who are simply practicing their faith. Acts 5.29 says, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. This highlights the dilemma faced by the church leaders. They must balance obedience to the government with their commitment to God's commandments and their religious convictions. This issue is part of a larger debate about religious freedom and protection from harm. On one side, there are people who want to ban conversion therapy to protect individuals from harmful practices. They believe that conversion therapy is abusive and should be stopped completely. On the other side, there are religious groups who worry that the ban will affect their right to practice their religion. They believe that the ban could criminalize normal religious activities like prayer and pastoral care. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. This passage speaks to the Christian understanding of freedom. Freedom to practice one's faith and serve others, which the church leaders feel is at risk with the new legislation. The church leaders are calling for better understanding and dialogue. They want the government to understand their concerns and work with them to find a solution. They believe that a better understanding of Christianity and its practices will help create laws that protect everyone without harming religious freedom. Colossians 4-6 says, Let your speech always be gracious seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. This scripture emphasizes the importance of respectful and constructive dialogue, 
which the church leaders are seeking with the government. As the government moves forward with its plans to ban conversion therapy, it will need to consider these concerns. It will be important to find a balance that protects individuals from harm while also respecting religious freedom. This will require careful thought and open dialogue between the government and religious groups. Proverbs 15.22 says, Without counsel plans fail, but with many advisors they succeed. This highlights the need for inclusive discussion and consultation, which the church leaders hope will lead to balanced and effective legislation. The letter from the church leaders to Prime Minister Keir Starmer highlights their fears about the proposed ban on conversion therapy. They worry that the ban will affect normal Christian practices and harm religious freedom. They are calling for a meeting with the Prime Minister to discuss their concerns and find a solution. This issue is part of a larger debate about how to protect individuals from harm while also respecting religious freedom. Moving forward, it will be important for the government to consider these concerns and work with religious groups to find a balanced solution. Using biblical scriptures, the church leaders underscore their beliefs and the potential consequences of the new law, hoping for a thoughtful and informed response from the government. <laughs>